Hi everyone. Regards from Vail, Colorado. Dini and I and the boys send you our warm wishes from cold Colorado. Thinking about everyone in Palm Beach. Just want to share a thought. Standing at these beautiful mountains, I'm reminded of King David's words. Essa in Ayalarim, I lift my eyes to the mountains, from where will my hope come? You know, Judaism began with two twin mountains, twin peaks. The first one was the binding of Isaac, where God told Abraham to go up to the mountaintop and offer up his son. And it was there on that mountain that God said, I will choose you and your descendants to be my people because you will pass the ultimate test. The second mountain is in this week's Torah portion, Mount Sinai, where the Jewish people actually received the Torah. Why is it that mountaintops are the two primary places of the unfolding of Jewish history and the most crucial points in, in Jewish history? So the Medrash says that the verse says, I lift my eyes to the mountains, but the word mountain, harim, could also be horim, parents which means that I lift my eyes to my parents. Judaism is a tradition that's passed down from parents to children. And when Jacob was lying at the stone, when he was fleeing from his brother Esau, he looks up to the mountains and he says, I look to my ancestors. We in Judaism look to the Torah and to our ancestors, the patriarchs and the matriarchs, who are our twin mountains, who provide us our guidance and our inspiration. You know, you don't have to teach your kids how to ski. The Talmud says you have to teach them three things. You have to teach them Torah, you have to teach them a profession, and you have to teach your children how, how to swim because that's survival, that's safety. And Torah is the spiritual survival of the Jewish people. And that's what the mountains remind us, that we have to be those parents who our children can lift their eyes to them, to be inspired by us, because we pass on to them a tradition that we've received from our parents, from their parents, going back thousands of years, all the way back to Mount Sinai, even further back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Becca, Rachel, and Leah. Just to conclude with a true story, the blues of a Rebbe, Rabbi Spiro, when he was in the concentration camps in Bergen-Belsen, they managed to smuggle in a little oven and some flour, and they made a few matzahs. And then there was a whole conversation, who would get to eat the matzah at the Passover Seder? And so, there were those who suggested that the elders, the oldest members of the camp, should get to eat the matzah. There were others that said maybe the rabbis should get to eat it. And they came to the blues of a Rebbe to ask him his opinion. And he said, I think the oldest members of the camp who are there should get to eat the few matzahs that we have. But then there was this one woman there and said, I disagree, I think we should give it to the children. And they said, why? And she said, because if we survive, we will have many memories of other Passover seders of eating matzahs. But if our children don't have this experience and they survive, God willing, how will they know what Passover is if they hadn't had this experience? And the Blush of Rebbe said, they, she is right, give it the few matzahs that there are to the children. Because in the Torah it says that Moshe said to Paro, Bin Arenu Biskanenu, we will go out with our children and our elders, putting the children before the elders. As parents, we have to be those towering mountains that our children can look up to them, because we know 